cafe anyway. Hi there, it's my Matthews. Mike's Daily Podcast. FM episode 2545. Hello, it's Mike Matthews. I have a cat on my lap named Rocky. Mike's Daily Podcast. And I think we'll probably have him as the podcast picture. Do you know of any other podcast that has a podcast picture on every single one that it puts out as... Mike Matthews is my name. I am singing to this to you song saying stuff. I was saying stuff to you in the song for the show called Mike's Daily Podcast. There we are. And the last podcast picture had the wonderful Alameda Creek, which is a Mike's river now. Daily it's a coming down. Podcast. I guess it could be even higher, yeah. but uh, we don't want that. And today, well, yesterday and early this morning, we had lots and lots of rain. Once again, a leak at the bottom of my house in the uh, basement area. That wasn't as bad as New Year's Eve, but nothing was as bad as 2022. Did not like that year at all. The only good thing was this cat that's on my lap, Rocky. We got him. He's a good guy. He's an indoor cat. Which is interesting because I thought I was allergic to cats. And at first, when we got him and I petted him, I was a little bit itchy. The Whatever skin touched him, I was like scratching a little bit. But now, after being with him for since October, it seems that I have gotten accustomed to whatever dander there was. But he's got this really short hair, so maybe it's not a big deal. I'm not sure. But yes, this is the podcast, the cafe anyway, where we allow cats and dogs and people that are allergic to them and anyone who is allergic to cats or dogs, because we have cats and dogs here, they are welcome to their own cone of silence that comes down and separates them from... And here's today's podcast picture. Their hideous allergy that's bugging them. The podcast picture is of... Rocky, oh, and he is sticking out his tongue. I guess some cats do that. When they're really, really happy, they stick out their tongue like dogs do. So see that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. I am not a podcast that has a gazillion listeners. I'd be happy with even a zillion listeners. We just got some listeners. And you are apparently one of them because you're listening now. And the late great Basil the Boxer He's saying all this cat talk Shut up with all the cat talk Ah. No he he was just Mystified by cats He would stare at them And say I don't get it So Republicans Now apparently are in favor Of McCarthy as speaker A majority Of Republicans support Kevin McCarthy's election to the House Speakership This according to the National Review This despite the chaos surrounding the Speakership race 59% of Republicans approve of McCarthy's election 21% disapprove Though McCarthy only recently became Speaker of the House 42% of Republicans approve of how he's handled the position so far Just one in eight disapprove of how he's handling the role. I don't know. That doesn't really sound like... (laughs) I mean, with everything they throw at Biden and how his approval ratings are below... I'm seeing 42%. In my brain, that's about less than half. Although 59% approve of his election. A little more than half. Anyway, cafe anyway The Christian colleges Are winning in court Where the Title 11 Threatened to remove funding Christian colleges won a major victory In court this week When a federal judge Dismissed a lawsuit That threatened the school's Federal funding In April 2021 A group of LGBT students Sued the U.S. Department of Education 
for exempting the Christian colleges from non-discrimination rules. The lawsuit included personal statements from students at universities such as Baylor University. The students described how colleges disciplined or expelled them for not abiding by standards for biblical sexuality standards rooted in the school's religious beliefs. The it the title 11 of the oh, I'm sorry title 9. It's in Roman numerals. It's <sighs> Title IX of the Civil Rights Act forbids sex-based discrimination in education. But colleges upholding traditional definitions for marriage and sexuality can request exemptions that allow them to adhere to scriptural beliefs on matters of sexuality. A federal judge dismissed the lawsuit that threatened their funding. And also, speaking of laws... And lawsuits, the Supreme Court is going to revisit racial preferences in college admissions. This, according to the Wall Street Journal, the Supreme Court is revisiting the issue of racial preference in higher education. The last time it did so in 2016, it upheld them by a four to three vote. All three dissenters are still on the court, along with three new conservative colleagues. In this term's cases involving Harvard and the University of North Carolina, students for fair admissions asked the justices to hold that racial preferences violates title, let's see, that would be a title six of the Civil, Civil Rights Act of 1964 and when practiced by public institutions, the 14th Amendment. The common expectation is that they will do so and definitely overturn 45 years of precedent permitting colleges and universities to discriminate in the interest of achieving the educational benefits of a diverse student body, said the Wall Street Journal. And Iraq... Also, the Wall Street Journal is talking about, uh, as we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike Silly podcast. Somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth where we're trying to dry out. Anyway. Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed al-Sudani defended the presence of U.S. troops in his country and set no timetable for their withdrawal, signaling, signaling a less confrontational posture toward Washington. Sorry, Sinus is still not completely 100% after getting COVID a couple weeks ago. Yikes. That drives me crazy when my sinuses get all messed up. But this is signaling a less confrontational posture toward Washington by Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed al Sadani early in his term. Less confrontational than his Iran-backed political allies And the stance that they took Until now, Mr. Sudani Had been in publicly Had been publicly silent about his views On keeping U.S. forces in Iraq Saying only that he would consult Iraqi commanders Some pro-Iranian militia leaders And Mr. Sudani's supporters in parliament Are pressing him to reconsider the U.S. Presence That has left the Biden administration And its officials Unsure about the future Of around 2,000 American troops In Iraq And a separate multinational Training force Under NATO command That is in Iraq Did you know Did you know all that was going on in Iraq? And finally The Stop Woke Act What is that? And speaking of another judge and um, lawsuits and whatnot, a Florida judge has allowed Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, and his Stop Woke Act to remain in place. Whoa. Fox News says a federal judge ruled that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' administration did not violate a court order regarding the state's Stop Woke Act, which prohibits colleges... Once again, critical race theory. It prohibits colleges from promoting critical race theory lessons and targets other woke concepts prevalent on higher education 
campuses. According to a survey of 20,000 students across 55 colleges, there is a liberal bias within higher education. 50% of college students identified as liberal compared to 26% identifying as conservative. That sounds about right. I remember when I went to UCSB back in the late 80s. Oh, we were all just really liberal thinking. That was, I remember giving money to some no nuke organization. I went, oh, that's a good cause. And then every year after that, they wanted money and they wanted more money. I only gave them like 10 bucks, but they, every year they wanted more money and more money. But you know, my 10 bucks helped, uh, helped us keep nuke free at least for the, the past uh, 35 years or so. So you're welcome. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth, look who's here. Hello, Michael Masters, madam. Woo, the big old I am so sorry about your sinuses. Woo. Yes. It's a thing. But I'm, you know what? I might take a day off or two from the podcast. I might get interrupted to let some of this heal up. That's a... Uh, Michael Masters, you should have some cabbage. Woo. Oh, a little cabbage. That might help me, yeah. Do you like sauerkraut? Yes. Do you like kimchi? Yes. Do you like coleslaw? No. Interesting. All have cabbage in it. But you don't like the coleslaw. I'm a very complex person. Woo! Madame Rutabaga. Right there. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the big attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, that was really interesting what you were talking about, D, with all those lawsuits and whatnot, D. Yeah, last day. Do you know that? Oh, there's this one last lawsuit story. Liberal men, this according to Life News, are getting vasectomies in record numbers to protest abortion bans across the country in the wake of the Dobbs decision... Overturning Roe versus Wade. Reports of increased numbers of vasectomies have been coming in over the last six months following the summer ruling from the Supreme Court. In fact, reports began surfacing after Texas became the first state to successfully ban abortions in late 2021. And according to Yahoo, vasectomies offer a form of permanent birth control for men and roughly 500,000 are performed every year in the United States. The only guys that I know who have done that were ones that had had a bunch of kids and were tired as heck and they got the okay from the wife and they said, yep, vasectomy time. But this is interesting. I bet most of these liberal men are either really, really young or really, really old like me. (laughs) And they just don't, you know, they don't care what they're doing to their bodies. People do some odd things to their bodies these days, don't they? The most altering thing that I've done to myself is I had a tooth get cut in half when I was about 12 in a freak accident at lunchtime outside we're at the lunch tables and somebody took a baseball bat and tried to psych me out with it like I was turning my head and they wanted to make it look like the baseball bat was coming right towards my face and scare me but instead they let the baseball bat go all the way and it hit my face which explains a lot about my face but also explained why half my tooth suddenly disappeared and was on the uh, lunch table and nobody took it except for me I put it in my pocket And walked away crying because I had been disfigured. Then, years later, but I did get the little rods stuck into the tooth and then they added a uh, a, 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 They added an addition to it so it looked like a normal tooth. And I had that from about 12 all the way to about 24, 25 When I had a crown put on it And it's still the same crown All these years later So that was it But getting anything else done 
I know it's slightly different for men. Women can have a lot more things done. But no thank you. That's just how I'm thinking about it. But that's about how I think about a lot of things as we talk about this as we're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Can you hear that water rushing? Oh, it's really rushing because it's so close to cafe anyway. That creek, that was just a tiny little creek. Now it's this raging, roaring river. Look out for that roaring. And hear me roar. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer. You can chime in about anything we covered today and let me know what you think. Your interesting insights. 336 MM Daily. 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM is in Mike Matthews Daily, as in what this podcast is. Call now. 336 MM Daily. And with more ways to reach me, it's A Frame. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.